right, so this is round two here with Sergey today um, from the Axela Network. Uh, we did this interview a couple of months ago, um, right after Cosmos, I think, which is where we also met in person. Um, and here we are a couple of months later. Um, a lot of big updates um, came out from the Axela project. Um, you guys also launched um, Satellite. You guys also announced a CoinList uh, public sale and had multiple rounds in between. So we're going to talk about a lot of things today. Um, also a potential osmosis integration that's in the works. Um, but first things first, Sergey, thanks for coming on. Thanks for doing this. Um, how is everything going on your end? It's going great. Yeah, and thanks for having me again. Great to chat. Awesome, yeah. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. I mean, last interview was very much about um, kind of like the, the backstory, how you guys started, right? Like very basic fundamentals. Um, and so for everybody who wants to hear a little bit about the background and backstory, please visit and that and watch that interview first. Um, but um, yeah, I think we can take take it from there and um, maybe you can share a little bit about the um, milestone achievements since the last interview, um, how you guys proceeded and um, where you guys currently at. Maybe we can give some bullet points on that. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, yeah, we've kind of gone quite a lot of, uh, um, yeah, quite far, I guess, uh, since the last time we spoke, right? So we started the phased uh, mainnet rollout of our network, right? So what that means is that we actually uh, kind of onboarded an initial validator set to the network, uh, started to turn on initial connections. I think we had, we connected like five EVM chains. I think we have, you know, connections across like four or five Cosmos chains uh, through IBC as well. And so we're turning on various assets to flow through the network in and out. Um, you know, I think uh, today there's been like close to, you know, 50 million uh, if TVL that sort of been moved uh, through um, one of the front ends, um, which is a satellite uh, front end built on top of the Excel network, right? Um, so those of you that kind of don't remember, uh, kind of Excel network is an interoperability network right? and its goal is to bridge different ecosystems to move assets and information across of them. And so we have a number of applications that have been built around the network, you know, simple ones from, you know, bridging applications, right, to more sophisticated ones that allow you to perform cross-chain activities more natively, right? And so pretty excited about that. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, we're going to be on onboarding more chains, um, launching the Axelar token in the coming months, and uh, uh, we'll have all these different kind of applications go live that, uh, that are working on. Um, more general composability across the ecosystems. Uh, what, are, what are some of the um, ecosystems that you're already connecting through um, through Axelar Network? I think there's like four or five of them, right? Like Avalanche and, and Terra. Maybe you can talk a little bit about um, the current stage. Um, you also dropped a, a number of 50 million in TBL. Does that mean $50 million that is already being like um, bridged through Axelar Network? Uh, maybe, maybe you can talk a little bit about some, some numbers and, and stats that you guys achieved so far. Yeah, um, let me actually, can I share my screen? I can show you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, awesome. Uh, yeah, so this is like a um, Axelar scan, which is an explorer built on top of the network, right? Um, and so you can see various statistics about like transactions we processed, like the volume. Um, this has been like a little over a month since we launched this, like, uh, you know, there's TVL. Um, you can see here, it's being re-indexed because we upgraded the network this morning. So maybe not the most up-to-date numbers, but you know, approximately correct. Uh, you can see like sizes of different transactions. Um, so this is actually like one of my you know favorite uh, tools built around the the Excel network, and it's built by our community. So which is like just amazing. Um, and so if you go to various like cross-chain activity, you can see like different chains that were connected. Um, you know, Ethereum, Avalanche, Polygon, Moonbeam, Phantom, Terra. Uh, we actually in, uh, integrated a bunch of other uh, Cosmos chains through IBC. I think they're just not displayed here. Um, I think we made like a IBC channel to Cosmos Hub. I, I think we're working on a channel with, you know, like Osmosis, uh, Juno, uh, a bunch of other chains. Um, so this, this will be updated over the coming days as we kind of re-index in the data. Um, but yeah, so, and I guess keep in mind that I think all of these actual like stats and numbers is just like, from one like pretty straightforward application on top of the network, which is just the satellite, right? Which is, um, you know, just, just a bridging app. So I'm kind of super excited to see once more applications, uh, you know, go live and uh, we have cross-chain native support, what's gonna happen through the network. 
Awesome. And, and can you talk a little bit about the kind of like core architecture, how um, Axelar Network is built? Um, we've seen obviously a lot of um, bridging models in the past few months, right? Also, um, many of them had critical vulnerabilities and also got exploited. So can you talk a little bit about how Axelar kind of like differentiates to these traditional models that we know and also some potential vulnerabilities or how you kind of like avoid that, you know, there would ever be a major hack or something like that? Yeah, no, great question. So, you know, on a high level, you can think of Excel network as a, a decentralized you know, proof of stake network that's built around the Cosmos SDK, right? So what that means is that um, at the network layer, uh, the validators are running as different sets of protocols to allow interoperability to happen across ecosystems, right? So the validators support, you know, IBC, right? Basic kind of protocol available through the Cosmos uh, SDK. We have our cross-chain gateway protocol, that's sort of implemented to communicate with uh, chains like uh, you know uh, Ethereum, right, or Avalanche, and the validators are uh, collectively observing events on those chains, right, and then running a decentralized consensus in order to act of what needs to happen with that event, right. So if you want to transfer, let's say, funds from you know Ethereum to Avalanche, then a certain event happens on the um, Ethereum chain where an actual way is called by the user right and then this event gets confirmed by the by the validator network and then the uh corresponding you know it is then uh sort of minted on the uh destination chain right so no single party runs this protocol it's it, it runs collectively by an open validator network anybody you know can join participate in the network um and um you know security is really uh, enforced through a combination of things. A, uh, we're built, I think, on you know one of the um, one of the best uh, kind of software stacks around the Cosmos SDK, right? To allow us to build our functionalities. B, the whole network was designed and kind of architected with um, you know, simplicity in mind, right? So if you look at our kind of gateway contracts, they're actually pretty simple, and so there is a strict decoupling that happens between you know an execution logic and um, cross-chain transfer logic, right? So um, most of the complicated functionality like routing of the assets across all these different ecosystems, translation of them, right? Between like an IBC packet and an EVM packet, it actually happens at the core network consensus layer of the Axel network, right? So that means is that our contracts can be pretty simple, right? So uh, it's a, a pretty bulletproof contract uh, and um, we have done you know, all kinds of audits around them. I think we've done like close to a dozen audits around the contracts. Um, you know, the foundation is allocating certain even funds for like insurance programs and things like that. So um, I think overall to make things secure, um, you know, it's a combination of the right technical design, the right architecture, the right implementation and kind of processes in place. And uh, we're taking a full stack approach to, to uh, as we're thinking through about it. Awesome. Yeah, I think for for most people that that might sound very technical the way you like explain that. Um, I think it would be cool if like in very simple terms you can explain how the Axelar network and how this like old interoperability protocol. Also for those that are completely now puzzled with the term interoperability, um, how does Axelar? How does that interoperability um, hub? I would say add value to all these other chains that pack to it? Like, why would any chain be, you know, excited about getting connected um, to each other through Axelar? So a couple of different things, right? Um, and, I, and I think one analogy that we'd like to make with Axelar is almost like an, uh, is, is an overlay network, right? An overlay service network. And so kind of the concept of overlay networks and service networks is actually pretty standard in like web two industry, right? When the internet was developed. And what these networks usually provide is they provide value for an ecosystem that's otherwise either unavailable or expensive. Okay. So when we're talking about Axel Network, uh, I think three key components add value um, to an ecosystem. I think one is a universal routing mechanism, right? So think about it this way. You have 10 different chains. You want to connect them together. Right. There are essentially two ways of doing this. One way of doing it is to have kind of pairwise connections across them. Right. And you're going to end up, you know, in an order of 
um, kind of, you know, 100 connections, right? Well, 50 connections, actually, right? Uh, and um, you are going to um, require maintenance and management of all these separate connections. Right? And so with Axel Network being sort of uh, a, a hub in the middle that allows you to minimize all the complexity, right? And so one central place where you can go to to universally deliver an asset from one ecosystem to all the other ecosystems, right? And as new networks are added, only one connection is to be made to those networks and all other previously connected ecosystems can automatically talk to it, okay? So this is what I call as routing, right? So routing through a universal uh, protocol that's built at the network layer. I think the second uh, big value proposition that the Axel network provides is translation of messages across ecosystems that speak very different consensus or smart contract languages, right? So for instance, you want to interact between a Cosmos chain uh, and an EVM chain like Ethereum. What has to happen underneath it is that certain packets need to be um, changed in a way that they're, um, you know, both networks can understand one another, right? And so where is this change of logic has to happen? Well, it can only happen in two places. It can either happen at your application logic, right? Or it can happen, you know, somewhere, um, somewhere in the middle by, you know, a third party kind of a network, right? And so this is what Axel does for you is that you can use the network to kind of translate these messages between ecosystems that have different formats, right? And not have to bake in this complicated logic at your application, at your application layer, right? And I, and I think a final point to, to this is, is actually security, right? Um, I think whenever we're talking about, you know, tens or hundreds or thousands of different chains, you're inevitably going to be in a world where no single chain can talk, you know, with all other chains. And so you're going to have to rely on certain hubs to transfer your information. Right? And when you do that, you, you know, you better rely on the hubs that are uh, kind of well engineered, right? Well designed and well architected in order to actually provide the security that you need. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a very big risk if your packet has to go through like three or four different networks and some of them end up being, you know, like small networks that you may not actually want to trust, right? So by having kind of an Excel network that has a security in mind as one of the core principles, you know, you are actually uh, simplifying the security assumptions and making it um, and making it safer to transfer assets across the ecosystems or other information for that matter. Um, what would you say to those people that think like, hey, you know, isn't isn't IBC, um, which is this um, interoperability standard in Cosmos, um, isn't that one day supposed to be this universal routing protocol? Um, what would you say to that? Do you think at one, one point there could there might be some sort of like competition with IBC or do you actually leverage IBC? Um, how do you view um, IBC fitting into that? And would it be fair to say maybe IBC is kind of like this TCP IP equivalent for Cosmos and then Axelar would be the TCP IP equivalent for the broader crypto and blockchain economy? Would that be a, a fair analogy? Yeah, so a couple of things I think to mention there. So A, you know, I think IBC is, a, is sort of a great protocol, right? And it works quite well for connecting all the Cosmos chains, like you mentioned, for connecting other ecosystems, um, you know, it's not that trivial, right? Or it cannot work um, the way it stands, right? So for instance, you know, with Ethereum chains or, you know, with uh, kind of a Bitcoin or other ecosystems, uh, it would take a lot of engineering effort to re-implement IBC, right, in those ecosystems. Um, so yes, you can think of Axler as kind of an extension of uh, IBC or um, kind of Cosmos connectivity with other ecosystems where IBC is uh, either unavailable or will take some time to, to build out, right? Um, so that being said, there is a very big difference between protocols and networks, right? So Axler is a network, so it supports multiple interoperability protocols, including IBC. And you know, I think IBC is great, and we have other protocols that we're supporting. And so, but on itself, Axel Serve is designed to provide, as I said, kind of a other types of value for the ecosystem, right? So it's translation of IBC pass messages with other formats. It's the routing functionality that you have, right? It's the kind of the security and so on and so forth. And so the whole uh, network has been designed with, um, with the goal in mind to 
interoperability more accessible and easier. And you know, we are going to support multiple interoperability protocols, right? Like that's that's what it is. But an interoperability protocol like IBC does not uh, mean that interoperability is solved. You still need to have a lot of infrastructure. You still have to have a lot of functionality. You have to have you know application layer interoperability protocols sitting on top of these you know TCP/IP equivalent uh, types of protocols. So. Um, and you have to have various services, right? You have to have services that make it easy for the applications to leverage all of these protocols, right? For the users not to have to pay, you know, multiple transaction fees as their like packets are going from one network to another and so on and so forth. You have to have, you know, relay services and so on and so forth. And so kind of Axel network is designed as a, as a piece of infrastructure, right? That, that has all these layers uh, underneath it, you know, and interoperability protocol is just one component of it. Awesome. And how is the process of <clears throat> kind of like eva evaluating which um, ecosystems you're connecting to? Um, and maybe you can name some of them that are currently in the works, if that's possible, and that you're trying to um, connect through Axelar Network. Yeah, so the way we build the stack is that uh, a lot of the components are actually reusable. So it makes it very easy to onboard, you know, different chains for Cosmos chains through IBC. It's, you know, it's a permissionless process, right? So anybody can actually connect. Um, for EVM chains, we actually programmed all of the commands at the network layer. So you can run um, through like a sequence of commands. They don't take more than 10 minutes. And then onboard an EVM chain, you know, before that, you do have to have validators that support and vote for events from it. Uh, but once that's done and kind of the contracts are verified, uh, it's pretty straightforward for us to onboard the EVM chain. Um, yeah, so we're looking at a bunch of others, you know, including like um, kind of near, right, Aurora, um, um, you know, Binance Smart Chain and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, for other ecosystems, again, kind of the way we build the infrastructure piece is that there's certain types of logic that you need um, to verify on events and to, um, you know, add a new chain into the ecosystem. And you can reuse the building blocks that we build to make those connections as simple as possible. Yeah, and I heard also, I think it was in one of the Twitter spaces or something of the Osmosis um, Dex. Um, I think Sunny mentioned that, that his kind of like favorite interoperability hub would be Axelar to also implement that on Osmosis. And then there's also a great article by Cosmos Hoss um, about potentially integrating um, Osmosis um, with Axelar Network. So can you talk about what this would mean for cosmonauts, right? Because we're also very excited about osmosis. Whenever a new token gets listed there, we're like, we jump on it, right? So yeah. if if <laughs> if if Axelar would be integrated or vice versa, osmosis would be integrated on, on Axelar, would that mean that we suddenly have access to all these tokens that are connected through Axelar on osmosis? Or what would be the benefit for, for the end user in that case? Yeah, the, the, the benefit for the end user is ability to interact with all of the uh, tokens that are connected through the Axel are on osmosis, right? Uh, with osmosis and create new trading uh, pools, um, add more liquidity to it, and have a very simple user experience in the process, right? So the way that this um, kind of integration would work, and we talked with, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the osmosis folks uh, around this, is that one of the unique kind of value propositions that we build around the network is to be able to process cross-chain transfers by allowing users to execute regular types of transfers to Axel generated kind of deposit addresses, right? So what that means is that, you know, suppose you have, um, I don't know, USDC on Ethereum, right? And you want to take that USDC and you want to, you know, deposit it to Osmosis, right? So the way we envisage the situation is that Osmosis, you go to Osmosis, you know, you have like a deposit button, right? It tells you a deposit address that you should use. And then you can go to any wallet on the Ethereum chain, right? It doesn't have to be MetaMask. And then um, you can just send a regular transfer to this deposit address. Right? And once you do that, then Axel Network will take care of all the other intermediate steps to route it, finalize it, and deliver it all the way to your uh, personal address on the Osmosis chain. Right? And then you can interact with it, right? So it really simplifies all the user experience and opens up a huge distribution channel Right, for all the osmosis users, where all of a sudden users from you know centralized exchanges from like dumb wallets uh, can perform regular transfers and deposit their assets to osmosis and have an experience which is 
you know, close to an experience of like a centralized exchange, right? Um, but powered by decentralized technology on the back end. And so I'll be kind of pretty excited about that. Uh, talk a little bit more about the the role of the Axela network. Um, you said already it's its own um, sovereign blockchain built on the Cosmos SDK. It serves as on a technical layer as kind of the, this this routing hub um, with its own validator set and all these kind of things. Um, but but talk a, bit, a little bit more precisely about also the the role of the um, AXL token, the Axela token, um, which uh, we can get into some numbers also about the, the currently sale and all these kind of things in a second. But talk more about from a utility standpoint. Um, where the um, Axela token is being used and what's kind of like the whole role and the positioning of, of the network um, in itself. Yeah, so, you know, the Axela uh, token is is basically used for uh, securing the network, right? The Axela network, uh, so users can uh, stake the token with validators, you know, earn corresponding rewards. It's used to pay transaction fees on the Axel network, right? And it's also used um, as a governance token, right? Uh, around the whole platform. Um, and so I think it's, a, uh, you know, it's a similar token behind, you know, an infrastructure proof of stake network um, that's used to uh, protect it, right? And used to govern it uh, going forward after, after the token launch. And, uh, you know, in this case, it would have a similar role at the, um, at the um, at the Axel network itself. Okay, so um, you guys, um, I think you guys retweeted that. That's from somebody else who did this. But um, in terms of the also the, the sale that you guys did on CoinList, um, there's also more details about the tokenomics, about the token allocation, and all these kind of things. So maybe you can point out some some of the highlights here on this uh, one pager. Um, what you guys, uh, what you are personally excited about? I mean. You guys have a lot of like impressive backers, right? With Coinbase and Binance. Um, maybe talk some of the strategic partners that you have and some of the tokenomics um, highlights, um, maybe in terms of the inflation of the token and rollout and how it will be kind of like brought into the uh, market. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think one thing to, to just kind of start off with is to understand that um, kind of a building, I'd say, complicated, right, like infrastructure uh, or uh, um, kind of interoperability in the network, like Axler is actually a very complicated endeavor, right? Um, I think, you know, if you look at kind of what we have done um, over the last kind of year and a half, it's just been incredible, right? I think we've kind of built the network, we have you know, more connections than people kind of have, you know, after talking about it for <laughs> four or five years. Um, and, um, you know, as a part of it, what, you know, we had to do in the process is build a world-class team to solve the problem, right? Uh, we have you know, kind of close to 30 people on the team right now. A lot of it is technical, like folks come with, you know, deep backgrounds in cryptography, kind of distributed systems, consensus, right? And, uh, you know, alongside we have uh, kind of a great supporters and, and backers that, uh, you know, helped us, I guess, uh, get to this point, right? And kind of supported the project to date. Um, and um, yeah, I think the way all of the you know partners or uh, investors or backers were chosen um, to to work with us is because of their long term strategic alignment to support the project, right? And continue. And um, you know, a lot of them understand that interoperability and infrastructure is a complicated problem, and it's not a problem that's you know going to be solved in in one or two years, right? It is a problem that we're going to be solving uh, for the next few years at the very least. Um, and I think it's one of the most technically challenging and one of the most um, rewarding problems to solve in the blockchain ecosystem right now, right? Um, you know, we can talk about hundreds of different applications, but in some sense, if you don't have, have robust interoperability infrastructure to support all of them, right, you're going to be, you know, left with horrible user experience, which we're, we're seeing right now, right? Like people who are using like various bridges and so on and so forth, and like it's just very confusing. So um, it's a long journey, right? And I think uh, what I'm excited about is just kind of continue building it with the team that we have put in place, with um, you know some of the partners um, that we have put in place, um, and continue building the the technology along the way. And I think as we you know get into the uh, token launch and things like that, you know I think our our goal is to now um, attract more and more of the community ecosystem to to play with uh, with the Axel network and, and and help us participate and build it. Right. Like to date, we had 
you know, many community members that ran validators on the network, right, or built various tools like Axel or Scan and um, kind of supported in the network growth. Now that the network is becoming, uh, um, you know, public, um, it's, uh, it is going to be a lot more involvement that we're looking for, for the, from the community, right? And, uh, you know, even in this, I think you can see uh, kind of pretty big pools allocated for various like community programs, right? Uh, that includes, you know, liquidity mining, potentially incentives, right? Uh, grants that, we, um, that we're supporting through the Axler Foundation, uh, various, um, various grants to build like tools and participate in the, in the, in the ecosystem development going forward. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited to, uh, I guess, continue building more internally, but also with our community as we, as we get into this uh, public phase. Uh, do you have any rough timeline for that? I mean, the, the token server on CoinList, I think, went pretty successful. Was uh, sold out um, pretty quickly. Um, what is the what is the timeline now for for the token rollout? And what what kind of like listings initially are you targeting? Do do you think it's going to be first um, on centralized exchanges, or do you target more, you know, the osmosis, Juno swaps um, of of the Cosmos ecosystem? Yeah, so right now, kind of the token launch is scheduled for um, around mid of May of uh, this year, right? Um, so I think initial liquidity will start flowing through that. The coin list uh, distribution will happen around that time as well. Um, you know, everybody else, including like, you know, the backers and the team, they're vested and locked uh, kind of for years after that, right? So everybody from like seed backers and the kind of Series A, uh, um, they're only getting vested over uh, kind of two years, so unlocked, and the team is actually vested over four years, right? So kind of from from that date. So you know we still have pretty deep plans and kind of continue building this for the years to come, like I mentioned. Um, yeah, in terms of where the listings will, will be, I think you know we'll have to kind of uh, wait and wait and see a little bit. It's uh, um, you know can't share too much just yet. Okay, but yeah, just seeing Coinbase and Binance here, you know, and the rest is, I don't know, maybe you can. Uh... People can think about what um, might be next in here. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I think centralized exchanges, you know, a good. I guess I am more, you know, I am pretty excited about all the, you know, decentralized exchanges, right, and the decentralized economy, and you know, including osmosis and, and places like that. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll yeah. see where the the interesting listings will come from. All right, so let's um, get into some of the community questions. I um, made a tweet out a few weeks ago. And actually, a lot of people also that I've talked to over the past few weeks, um, you know, in, in Cosmos especially, like, we're we're a little bit spoiled, I think. We're a little bit spoiled, you know, about how Moses got rolled out, how Juno got rolled out. You know, there was zero VC money in the beginning, zero, like, private sales and all these kind of things. Um, and I think that was a no very noble concept. And... I think a lot of people were also surprised how well it played out also with the token prices and right when basically only up to the right forever. Um, and then, you know, on, on Axela, you guys took a, a different approach, which is not, I mean, it's not really a different approach, just like the, the classic approach, I would say, um, to onboard more strategic partners, which could be more beneficial for the longevity of the project itself, because you have more people that have a financial stake in a project, right? Um, and I think over over forty percent um, of the token were sold in various rounds. Um, I don't even know what the evaluation was in the seed round, um, but yeah, maybe you can address a little bit of that. Um, you already talked a little bit about it a few minutes ago, but maybe like precisely on you know the people that say, hey, they're giving away everything to the you know VCs, and we're supposed to be community focused. So yeah, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about about that. Yeah, so I guess a couple of points there. Uh, yeah, I think you know actually. Just just under thirty percent, right? Was sold kind of to the backers uh, from it, and I guess um, you know just to emphasize, I think about the same amount is allocated towards community programs, right? As we get into the launch, and uh, you know we'll we'll use those programs to kind of engage the community more and more. Um, I do think it's important to kind of understand that um, I think what we're building with Axler is one of the most technically challenging infrastructure plays in the blockchain ecosystem. Period. OK, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've worked on a lot of things like over the years, like everything from theoretical algorithms to kind of system design and, and scaling with us. I think interoperability is by far um, 
kind of the most challenging technical problem that I've worked on, right, in my career. And uh, to actually solve it, um, like I mentioned earlier, you do have to have world-class team, right? Then you do have to have world-class focus. Okay, our focus over the over the last year and a half has been on building. Period. Nothing else, right? <laughs> um, you know, not token distributions or things like that. Um, we needed funding, I think, to get started, and um, you know, our backers supported us. When I guess at the moment where people didn't even realize or appreciate how important interoperability would be, right? I think you know, uh, our early slides were like, well, we think there's going to be like ten or twelve ecosystems that we'll need to interoperate, right? Mm -hmm. Like, well, now we're talking about you know hundreds of thousands, right? So it was early days where we had to place certain bets, right? And you know, investors had to place certain bets that this is going to be you know an important an important problem to solve for the ecosystem, right? And, um, and uh, uh, yeah, and you know, from my perspective, I did not want to have any distraction, right? I wanted to have the best in class team. I wanted to have best in class partners and uh, focus, focus, focus on execution. And I think we've delivered very well uh, on that, right? With rolling out the, the initial network, we already have um, more connections than you know most other protocols have over multiple years uh, of development, um, and. Um, you know, we're going to continue executing on this. And uh, I think, like I mentioned, the, the partners were chosen because they understand the long-term uh, value of interoperability plays, right? And there, and many of them are also providing other types of, you know, value for the ecosystem, whether or not it's um, kind of bootstrapping initial liquidity, right, to the network or, um, you know, helping set up kind of a various pools um, across different assets that will be supported by Axelar and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah. I, like I said, we are going to continue engaging, I think, you know, more with the community and, you know, 30% of the funds are allocated uh, from the foundation to engage with the, with the community programs. Um, but just given the complexity of the project, we needed to focus. Um, and, uh, you know, I think um, we executed on that. Fair point. Yeah, fair point. And I think, um, when, when was the first uh, round that you raised, uh, the seed round? There was... Year and a half so ago, it was, uh, yeah, kind of a year and eight months ago, something like that, or almost two yeah, years. I think, I think people also have to understand that this is like way, 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 way before IBC even came out, right? Like, sure, now yep. we can see all these crazy liquidities and mining, and you know, I suppose this is a huge success. Um, but Osmosis only started um, one and a half years ago, right? And um, they were betting on IBC, and you guys are betting on something even bigger than that. So I think like you always have to see things in perspective. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's a good answer that hopefully a lot of people also understand and appreciate that. At the same time, you also have to finance the project, right? And pay 40 people's uh, salaries <laughs> as you're working with you. Like there's a lot of things around it. Um, there's, okay, another question I get a lot is um, about the Osmosis integration. We talked about it. Um, is there any like concrete timeline where you think um, you know, as much as it would be integrated. So I think we're waiting on the you know governance vote by the osmosis community, and I think the team is. I don't have the timeline when the team is gonna kind of open that up. Um, you know, from our technical perspective, everything is everything is there, everything is ready, right? We already had uh, kind of connections and everything on the test net. So as long as you know the osmosis community supports it and uh, um, approves it, then you'll be. Uh, it'd be pretty pretty quick after that. Okay. Um, cool. So let's see if there's another question on Twitter. Um, Munch is asking if satellite can function without AXL tokens and fees are paid in source coin. What's the part um, AXL has to pay? Interested, interested to know more on this. Yeah, so great question. Yeah, so Effectively, the way we architected the network is that you, as a user, um, only need to pay you know the fee in the on the source chain in the asset that you transfer, right? So suppose you know you're transferring um, like Terra UST from one ecosystem to the other, the fee subtracted in the Terra UST, right? And that fee is actually used to subsidize all the other fees, right? So what happens behind the scenes is that um, our relayer services actually 
uh, would subsidize your fee on the Axel network for processing by the Axel network, right? And they would subsidize the fee on the destination chain, where as a user, you know, you never have to transact there, you never have to post transactions or uh, kind of worry about transaction fees. Um, and so at the back end, kind of what happens is there's all this uh, kind of conversion, right? And, um, you know, the, the source fee that you pay uh, on the source chain is then used to... Um, you know, buy the the Axel token, right, and pay the fees on the Axel network, and as well as the the destination chain. So it's actually pretty interesting and in, in novel model in this case, in that um, you know the applications and the, some of the infrastructure that we set up has um, direct utility and usability around the the Axel token itself, without users having to interact with it directly, right? So it is used all the time <laughs> on the back end. Yeah. But as a user, uh, you don't have to think about it. So, which I think is quite interesting. Yeah, that's why I like. I think focusing on on the user experience in the end of the day is super important. That's also probably one of the big success factors of Osmosis, is because they yep. just made it so easy. And even Kepler, right? It's uh, there's new features coming out all the time that make our lives as end users easier. And that's how you also retain your users and potentially even um, scale them. Uh, there's another question from Kind. Maybe we can wrap it up with that one. Um, actually two questions in one tweet. Um, the first one is more of a statement, but he was asking if you can maybe talk a little bit about that more, which is that the Axelar threshold SIG tag is superior to traditional multi-SIG bridge. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about what that means and how it uh, uh, differentiates. So the way we actually build the network is being like signature agnostic in some sense, right? So what that means is that, um, Kind of the consensus layer understands different um, signature implementations, right? including like um, basic like concatenation of signatures, like in a multi-sig environment, um, including like threshold cryptography. I think we have plans to onboard, you know, like BLS and so on and so forth, right? Um, and so the way we build the stack um, is to make it easier to swap one signature for another, depending on the trade-offs that they are, right? Uh, so for instance. Uh, you know, whenever you're interacting with a Bitcoin network, um, you can have a very large like multi-sig size, right? So kind of things like threshold cryptography and ECDSA uh, or kind of now uh, new versions of like Schnorr that you can implement in a threshold way allow you to generate um, one signature right, from a collection of validators that have shares of the corresponding secret key, right? Uh, in the traditional way, kind of if you're doing multi-sigs, um, you would have to kind of concatenate all the keys and that would result, uh, or all the signatures that would result in higher kind of gas costs, right? Uh, but we have implemented also the traditional multi-sig, that's actually what's kind of deployed on the on the EVM chains today, but it doesn't quite work for other environments like, you know, like Bitcoin, um, and you can save some, some gas fees if you do um, threshold optimizations that allow you to have kind of smaller signature sizes. Awesome. Yeah, I think that um, answers the question. And um, yeah, I think we can wrap it up. We're almost at, we're pro approaching an hour, I think. Um, yeah, maybe you can share some final thoughts on, on what's coming in the next weeks um, and also how people that are now intrigued that think, hey, this sounds really cool what Zerg is telling here, even though I don't only understand health, um, how they can get started, how, they, how can they get involved? What would be the first step? Yeah, I mean, I think a good place to land is our website, right? Axel.network. Um, you can find, you know, information about the, the roadmap, right? Some of the things that are um, will be coming into the network layer. And uh, I would encourage folks to sign up, you know, in Discord and, and start playing with the network, right? So you can spin up a node. Um, you can uh, go to uh, docs.axel.dev. Um, which is a kind of some documentation that we're starting to put out there. It's still in the early phases, but uh, now that we have a little bit more breathing room, we're going to uh, accelerate, um, you know, cleaning up some of this documentation. And yeah, you can, you know, download an SDK, you can uh, integrate uh, functionality into, you know, your front end or your decks or application that you're building. And uh, we're going to be open up more functions calls through the network, things like, you know, general message passing, things like, um kind of composability across new ecosystems um so yeah all of that will be coming over the coming uh weeks and months you can also already use um satellite right through through the axilar website i think you can access it right 
You, yeah, you can use Satellite. Uh, you know, it's just a sample app. Uh, we have other DEXs that are also integrating um, kind of the deposit functionality through our SDK, right? So, you know, our, our hope is that eventually you don't have to go through uh, any of the bridging applications and you can just interact with the, with the applications that you want directly with the assets that you have. Uh, and so these direct integrations with applications is something I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to come up over the coming months. Awesome, yeah. Um, I will link um, all these things below. I always say that and I always forget to put it, but this time, for real, this time I don't forget it. Um, yeah, thanks. We'll probably do this again in a, a couple of weeks or months um, to track the progress and the updates that are coming from your side. Hopefully by then we already have the in osmosis integration. Looking forward to that. And yeah, we'll see you latest, I guess, in Cosmoverse later this year uh, in Medellin, awesome. Colombia. So, yeah, that would be fun. I'm looking forward. Awesome. Yeah, good to see you again, man. Take care. Likewise. See you. See you. Bye.